Welcome to a special interview section of Anglican TV. As you know, we like to interview people and ministries from around the world. Today I have with me Glenn Petta and Kyle Spradley from SOMA. Now, before we get too far, come the credits. All right, welcome back to the program. I have two individuals here who have, I've known for a long time. Uh, Glenn Petta was the director of SOMA USA, and uh, when I traveled uh, to all these different countries and continents, there was Glenn. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Glenn. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Glenn. Because he's involved in a ministry, uh, SOMA USA, that goes into the field and helps uh, dioceses, clergy, lay people, uh, mm -hmm. and helps in so many different programs and ways that we want to talk about that because Glenn is stepping down and Kyle Spradley is taking on the leadership of SOMA. And this is an important interview to have because this is COVID times. How do missions and ministries work in this day and age? And what's SOMA going to do in the in the, the day and age of, uh, of COVID? So let's talk about that but first before we get too far glenn you've been doing ministry for decades why now why is it time to step off is there a sign that you you've you've received well kevin it's always good to be with you and we've shared some really uh incredible stories out together and uh uh 12 years ago i'm a dentist by trade the lord uh called me to sell my dental practice and uh, lead an international mission agency, which uh, many thought I was nuts to do, but God uh, made it very clear, and I wanted to be obedient to what his calling is, and just as I was obedient to that calling, he's put on my heart to step back as the national director at this time, and so mm -hmm. I want to be obedient in that same uh, really calling to step back as the national director for SOMA. All right, now Kyle's onto the scene. Uh, hmm. Kyle, somebody calls up and says, hey, do you want to be in charge of SOMA? Uh, that's, the, that's one of the biggest uh, missions in the Anglican Church. What do you say? Well, it wasn't quite, I don't think it went quite that quickly. Okay. Um, Good. What, what I would like to say, <laughs> that's right, it is being in, both Glenn and I are in the same diocese, in the Fort Worth diocese, and I think it would be uh, easy to jump to the conclusion because I would do the same that there is something going on right oh so there's something behind behind the curtain or under the table that was going on and I can assure you uh, God was doing something in my life uh, for more than a year that led up to uh, the call that I got from the board and going through the going through the interview process so there it was real and it was the hand of God that's that's really has brought me to this point right today Okay, let's tell people a little bit of the history of SOMA. SOMA uh, started, I think, after the 1979 Lambeth Conference, and uh, it's been going strong. It has many famous uh, people involved in it, uh, yeah. Terry Fulham and others. Um, give me a, a little background, Glenn, on, on SOMA. Yeah, Michael Harper was the, really the catalyst after the Actually, it was 78, I think, is when they mm -hmm. uh, had the conference, and there was a move of the Spirit. It was a pre lambeth conference that uh, occurred, and a lot of the archbishops and bishops uh, just had a move of the Spirit where there was dancing at the altar, and people were wondering what, what is going on or what happened to these bishops and archbishops. And, and so the, the call of Soma was to be the nervous system for the body of Christ. And so... Uh, Michael Harper was the catalyst to be able to uh, really begin it in, in, in the UK, and then SOMA USA was formed in 84. And so the idea is that there would be all these different international bodies around the world that would do short-term missions to minister in the transforming grace of the Holy Spirit to leaders around the world, because um, there's just not other mission agencies that minister to the leaders. And over that period of time, uh, leaders were able to uh, feel comfortable and trust the ministry of SOMA to share their really most intimate 
difficulties that they're having in ministry where they wouldn't share with somebody else that's a, an equal or another bishop or another archbishop. So some as ministry kind of fell into that uh, part of ministering to those leaders uh, through the grace and, and allowing the Holy Spirit to work within them to uh, do the ministry that they're really uh, called to do and that in the power of the Holy Spirit. No, and f the burnout at the clergy level in the first world mm -hmm. is very high. Imagine what it's like in the third world, where the resources are so uh, fewer, where there's uh, the the travel is so greater, where the bishop has to use a bicycle to get around, and the priests have to walk on feet. It's so much different uh, than the the first world feel we have here. And so having those relationships and that type of ministry is very encouraging to the clergy in foreign lands. Um, Kyle, that's how SOMA formed. Tell me a little bit about you know what you see the next five years of SOMA being, because we're coming out of COVID. We see the light at the end of the tunnel. Vaccinations are happening around the world right now. And there's a point now where we're going to be able to open up the borders and travel more. And you've had, and you can explain this as well, a time of using Zoom in your ministry. But tell me about Zoom and then the future. Um, that's a great question. Uh, Glenn and the board did a fantastic job, right? When COVID hit, um, and shut things down the mission field um like so how does soma how does soma continue its ministry uh, and so soma like many others leverage technology right a zoom call um and so in the spirit to to stay in the calling of of soma to minister to leaders um well-respected anglican leaders from around the world uh, were contacted they were very willing um, to lead what's called a pastor to pastor call, right? Ministering to the ministers. And that topic would be uh, chosen by that particular uh, leader and someone would facilitate the meeting and between 30 and 50 leaders um, would be on this pastor to pastor calls and Glenn's let me know. So that seven of those have occurred. It's kind of on a quarterly basis or, or as it's discerned when, when it's time, right? Because this is this isn't a program ministry. This is um, this is a ministry that we and Glenn has taught me in the mission field beginning 2014. This is a move of God, not the move of man's thoughts on how he thinks something should go forward. So to answer your question, um, as God continues to lead Soma, um, seems like these Zoom calls are a good way to continue until he says no. Um, and getting back out into the mission field, um, instead of going pastor to pastor and through the Zoom call, we look forward to going person to person, right back into the field to minister face to face uh, with leaders, lay leaders, ordained leaders, um, both here and abroad. I'm looking forward to when God makes that happen. Okay, well, do we have something on the calendar? No, but we're talking about it. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> you talking about pastor to pastor? <laughs> well, I didn't catch that. Was that? Uh, you talking about pastor to pastor? Yes. Yeah, so, well, it, 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 missions. I mean, I, so many people I've talked to are afraid to start scheduling yet until they get the all clear. You know, it's like uh, in World War II in London, you're waiting for the, the sirens to say all clear. It's all over, let's get back and uh, onto the streets. The, the bombings have stopped. When does the all clear happen for SOMA? You, you have the, the Zoom calls going still, which is great. And everybody admits Zoom is wonderful, but it's really two dimensional band-aid uh, for what we need to do as you know missionaries of, of the living God. So how soon do you think you're going to be restarting your travels and going into the field? Uh, which is a great question. Um, so Glenn and I have been discussing a where and he gave me some very good advice and said let's let's for your first mission as the mission leader let's plan a place that is, is a known quantity that's familiar. And so I've, I've been in the Diocese of Northern Malawi several times for various reasons. Um, we don't know if that's where it's going to be. Uh, we don't know when, but that's the discussion of this might be a good place to start, but as God leads. And so 
uh, we're keeping our eyes tuned to what are the travel um, requirements and guidelines specifically into that country. Um, so when those become more clear, it's easy to put something on the calendar. And, and as we know, as our brothers um, on the African continent, they're a lot more flexible with times than, than we are. So, um, but that's what we know. Can we pinpoint something? No, but we can work towards that uh, with an eye towards, you know, when is it going to be right? When we slip in and... Now, Soma, if you look back at its history over the decades, has many great fruits that you can say, yep, God was working here. God was working here. God, you know, led this mission here. And you see transformed lives. One of the missions, which now if you look back at, it was Myanmar. You've been to Myanmar so many times now over the last uh, several years. Well, gosh, it's now a country in absolute turmoil. Thank God we were there early to help the clergy and to to be ministers before the government shut all that down. Uh, tell me about your, your travels to Myanmar. You know, one of the things that we try to do in Soma is not to go back to the same places uh, at this, you know, continually. So uh, I've worked with uh, four of the six dioceses in Myanmar, along with Archbishop Stephen in Myanmar. And um, we were blessed to begin our mission work with the House of Bishops in Myanmar. Uh, so ministry with those leaders has just been uh, an incredible blessing because we're we've done missions on intercession, missions to the Sunday school leadership, missions to uh, clergy and different uh, deaneries, different dioceses. And uh, the other thing that, that came out of those missions to Myanmar was Archbishop Stephen came to the U.S. and did a mission to the USA with SOMA with clergy in Kansas City. We had about, uh, about 50 clergy in Kansas City, and it was the first time he was able to share his story about his own spiritual life and growth and difficulties without people listening and watching and being concerned about what his words are that he, that he spoke. Mm -hmm. And so that in itself ministered greatly to the archbishop as he shared. So now as we look at what's happened in Myanmar in the last couple of months, we know that the calling that God gave us for the last six years into Myanmar has helped strengthen and sustain those leaders with the difficulty that they're that they're going through right now. And so, you know, we don't know from a mission standpoint exactly what the outcome is going to be or what the benefit is, but God has allowed us to see that that six years that we have spent, and I look forward to when we'll be able to go back to Myanmar, but we're able to see the benefit of that with the difficulty that has transpired over the last two months. Hmm. Now, a lot of people are going to say, I'm watching it on the TV. I've seen the Soma thing for the first time. Why haven't I learned about this before? Well, you know, it's a big audience now. This is a great time to learn about Soma. How can they learn more about Soma? Well, let me let me just throw out. Um, Soma is known very well internationally with the leaders internationally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, not known as well in the U.S., but the the pastor to pastor calls that we have done over this past year have given us great uh, the great a great ability to be known to clergy in the U.S. that may not have ever been able to uh, be aware of some as ministry, and so um, that's that's one thing. I think uh, the other thing is I'll let Kyle answer, but with his background in uh, videography and cinematography, I expect that we're going to have some amazing stuff that's going to be on the website as he's starting to look at how that's going to be. So I turn it to Kyle. Yeah, no, no pressure. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, <laughs> um, please rephrase the question for me, Kevin, because I was so lost in Glenn's fantastic answer that I need it rephrased. Please. Sure. So my question is, you know, for the people who've never heard of SOMA, or yeah. Soma USA before. And I, I have to admit, with the Anglican TV audience, we're very global, and everybody who goes to a GAFCON knows who Soma is. Everybody uh, on, on the continent of Africa knows who Soma is and who Soma 
USA is and Glenn and, and all, all the previous directors. But this is a global audience where we're reaching Europe and uh, parts of America, Canada, uh, South America, where they saw it. How did they learn more about SOMA? Um, number one, um, SOMA is, is a part of the Anglican Global Mission Partners, right? A, a group of like-minded uh, mission agencies that are part of uh, the province of North America. Um, also, of course, there is a website, there is a Twitter, there is a, a Facebook page. And as Glenn alluded, my, my background, my, my um, full-time job, as you were, for the last uh, 28 years is as a cinematographer in video production and for 25 of those self-employed. So I, I feel like you know, uh, these skills, right, that I have used uh, as, as a livelihood will, will come into play and create some content uh, that we can uh, that people can see right it's it's a hard minute how do you show a ministry when it's person to person you can only show so many things with which is important right people in close connection hands on people the that's how ministry happens and teaching happens but that's it's, it's not a challenge but i look forward to it's it's about storytelling right? as glenn mentioned this is relational when and I so talked to the, the bishops uh, at GAFCON and talked to uh, my, my African friend bishops, uh, the fruits of Soma are spoken of frequently. And, uh, you know, your fruits speak for themselves. And that's why I would appreciate you having time to do an Anglican TV interview. People say, why don't you do more in interviews? Well, I, I, I finally get really interesting people here in a room in COVID times. We're going to do an interview. I want to thank you gentlemen for your time. I, we want to ask that the audience keep Kyle in your prayers and uh, also Glenn as he's transitioning uh, to a new place uh, where God will continue to use you. Only that, as we know, rest only comes in heaven. Uh, we'll continue to use you. I want to thank you both for your ministry and I uh, want to thank the audience for praying for you as well. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much, Kevin. Appreciate your time, buddy.